Sliding filament theory is the mechanism by which muscles are thought to contract at a cellular level. An understanding of the structure of skeletal muscle is useful when learning how sliding filament theory works. Each muscle is made up of a number of bundles of muscle fibers. Each bundle of muscle fibers contains anywhere from 10 and 100 individual fibers. Each muscle fiber itself contains cylindrical organelles known as myofibrils, which themselves are bundles of proteins called actin and myosin. Surrounding the myofibril, there is a network of tubules and channels called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, where calcium is stored. Each myofibril can be broken down into functional repeating segments called sarcomeres. If we look at a two-dimensional model of a sarcomere, it consists of actin and myosin. When a nerve impulse arrives at the muscle, it causes a release of a chemical called acetylcholine. The presence of acetylcholine causes depolarization, enabling calcium to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The calcium binds to troponin, changing its shape, and so moving tropomyosin from the active site of the actin. The myosin filaments can now attach to the actin, forming a cross bridge. The breakdown of ATP releases energy, which enables the myosin to pull the actin filaments inwards, contracting the muscle. This occurs along the entire length of every myofibril in the muscle cell. When an ATP molecule binds to the myosin head, the myosin detaches from the actin and the cross bridge is broken. When the ATP is then broken down, the myosin head can again attach to an actin binding site further along the actin filament and repeat the process. This repeated pulling of the actin over the myosin is often known as the ratchet mechanism. This process of muscular contraction can last for as long as there are adequate ATP and Ca plus stores. Once the nerve impulse stops, the Ca plus is pumped back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum and the actin returns to its resting position, causing the muscle to lengthen and relax.